Just doing a set of tracks on a skid steer. So you can see, we've got that one done. This is why the old ones are coming off. Not some mint. Oh, I guess we'll start over here. So we've got some blocking under the rear. And we've picked the front end up. So as the front end comes up, it'll push the back end back, down, and it'll pick this idler up for us. So we've got the track off the ground here. This skid steer is actually fairly nice to work on track wise. So it's got the same tension system that you'd see on an excavator or a dozer. But there's a grease nipple in there. You back the fitting out. It'll let the grease out of the cannon, which will let our idler come in. We've got our handy dandy strap and chain. And we're just slowly putting tension in. You can see the idler is almost all the way in. You can actually hear the idler creeping. So we're just gonna keep on doing that until it stops creeping. And then we're gonna give her a couple smacks with the sledgehammer in between, just to loosen everything up in case it's bound. So now we've got the idler pushed as far back as we can. You can see we've got a whole bunch of slack here. So what we're gonna do is, here's these clips that hang down. So I gotta get the track lifted up high enough that I can pull the clips this way because they're on either side of the idler straddling it. So kind of like this, and I'm just trying to pull it up high enough and then push the clips over. So we used the blocking, which has gotten significantly smaller since we used the last. But I think these will be big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there. We're going to use the machine sprocket to roll the track forward, just like a bicycle chain. If you're trying to get it on, you know, you kind of just get it lined up and then you spin your crank and it'll pull it in line, so we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to block this up and then pull it over and it should walk itself right off of here and then we'll pull the back end off. So anytime you're ready, Brandon.
don't want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning. So Brandon's going to come on out and give me a hand. I think if we just slide it back this way a little bit, get it off of here. Do the bottom. And then we should be able to, uh, if you push it this way, there you go. And then we'll drop it. There you go. And then we'll get these out of the way. That's that. So we got the track off. We're gonna look inside. So we're just looking at the uh, frame here where the front idler frame kind of rests in the track frame. So we're just looking, the bolts are secure. There isn't a huge gap here. There isn't a huge gap here. Same thing on this side. And the bearing on the idler is good. There's no side to side play. Same thing with these rollers, right? Give them a jiggle, give them a spin. They're all good. And a rear idler here. So again, no slop in the bearing, spins nice. And we're looking at our segments here. So what we're looking for is they're nice and square shaped still. When they wear, they'll get very pointy like this. This, so to get a very, very tapered point. That's when you want to replace them and you just rip these bolts off, it'll slide off. So now we get to get that track right there, which is 561 pounds, over to here. That'll be fun. Because this thing is 561 pounds, and I'm kind of fat and lazy, we're going to use these handy dandy little rollers that are actually sled rollers for moving sleds around, which are for argument's sake, 500 pounds. So, ready? Work smarter, not harder. Now that we've wheelied our not very light track over, we're going to kick one of these wheelies out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and get these tabs locked into this rear idler, and then we're going to lift it up and place it onto the sprocket. So we'll have this back end, and the front end will be angled over like this. And then we're going to work the front end over with the pry bar up onto the frame. And then we'll use blocks and a bar to get it up over and onto the idler as the rear sprocket turns the track for us like that bicycle chain we were talking about. Welcome back to track wrestling, round two, fight. So we're gonna get this bottom in so you can see these tabs are hanging up. So we're gonna try and pull it back and shove it in. Once that bottom is pushed in, the track will be kind of leaned over towards the skid steer and we'll be able to walk it over these sprockets here. Once we got the sprocket on, then we can use the machine to turn the track and walk it over the idler. have a lot of slack right here, which is going to kind of bite us, but if we can get it onto the sprocket, then once we start turning, it will go. Oh, we know it again. There we go. 
All right, that's so much better. There we go. So now we've got the clips on either side on that sprocket so it'll be retained. And this rear idler, it's split so the teeth go inside in between. So what we're gonna do now to help us out is we're gonna lower the skid steer. What that's gonna do is rather than fight all of this weight in the slack, as we bring the track frame down, it'll push the track like this and all the extra slack is gonna go that way. And that way it'll give us a little extra play to get it up over that idle. So we've got the back locked in. We're gonna squish this track by taking the slack out of here. It's gonna bring it forward. So all I'm gonna do for right now is I'm just gonna lean into this and keep my foot clear here just in case it drops for whatever reason. And I'm gonna get Brandon to lower the machine to bring that slack up for us. Go ahead, Brandon. teeth up on the track frame and we're flush against the idler here. So what I'm going to do is now is start inserting blocks to lift the teeth clear of the idler and then I'll be able to lever it over and it'll slide right over onto the idler. Okay Brandon, we're going to go forward.
either side. That's good there for now. We're on either side of that sprocket. We're inside the rear idler. And we're either side of the front idler. So once I popped the front on, the back had started to walk off. Luckily I stopped before it actually came right off. It was, the tooth was sitting right, right about here. So then all I did was we spun the track the other way, rather than if we continued in the same direction, the bottom, since it was out, would have pulled the top off. So we just spun it the other direction and now we're winning. So all we got left to do is we'll tighten up this fitting, so the nut, and then we'll start pumping this out. We'll push that grease can and the idler out, and then we'll set the machine down and do the final tension adjustment. So we've got the machine set back down. As you can see, now that we've set it down, we're not on our block anymore. So the final thing to do to set the tension is you're just gonna lift the machine up with the bucket. So you put the bucket on the ground like we had it. We'll lift it back up. The rear idler is gonna stay on the ground and you're gonna pick the track right up off the ground. So this is hanging loose. And the manual says that we should have five bottom rollers, but we only have four. So you basically wanna measure from the middle. So what we can do is you're supposed to measure from the bottom of the roller to the top of the track. And that gap should be three centimeters, should be. But what we can do is we can measure the distance from here to here. We can add that and then measure from the center here from here down to here. That'll give us our proper track tension. You'll want to check that every 50 hours according to the manual. So you run the track for a bit, um, 50 hours, especially when it's new, you want to check it a lot because it'll stretch a fair bit when it's new. And then you'll just check that gap. If the gap is larger than it should be, you'll take that cover off. It's two half inch bolts and you just add a little bit of grease to that nipple there. It'll fill the cannon and push the idler out and tighten up your track.